mind shutting off that noise? I should think you'd have more consideration for your baby. Oh, baby likes music. And besides, it's not his bedtime for 15 more minutes. Anything exciting in the evening paper? To you, possibly, yes. A former chorus girl has just divorced her second husband for a half million dollar settlement. Anyone brave enough to marry twice deserves such a reward. Hmm. I must say that's a nice sentiment for one's own daughter-in-law to express. Under some conditions, it is. Yes, Mary? How many places shall I set for dinner, Mrs. Weymouth? Just two. My son expects me to stay for dinner, if you don't mind. Oh, of course not. I'm sorry. Three, Mary. And make some cocktails for Mr. Weymouth. Bring one to my room. I have a headache. Lola! Good evening, son. Hello, Mother. Feeling well tonight? No, John. I'm extremely upset. Well, what's wrong? Your wife. Ever since I arrived this afternoon, she has annoyed and aggravated me. You know how poor my health is. I simply can't stand much more. Now, now, Mother. Aren't you exaggerating just a little bit? So, you infer that your own mother is lying. That woman is even poisoning your mind against me. Mother! Not another word. I should cut you off without a cent instead of supporting you and this actress you disgraced our name with. You're being unfair. Lola's a good wife and a good mother. You're a fool. Do you happen to know where she is right now? Probably in the nursery. I'll go find her. Don't waste your time. You'll find her in her room drinking cocktails. I think you've said just about enough. Hello, dear. And how's Daddy's little man? Take baby back to the nursery, please. Don, I've heard your mother's opinions about me just once too often. Either she leaves this house or I do. I refuse to be ordered about like a servant. I pay the rent for this apartment. And I've shown my gratitude by quietly accepting your insult. Please. For two years, I've sincerely tried to like and respect your mother, but she makes it impossible. But, darling, you're being unreasonable. I would say entirely too tolerant. I think enough of my marriage to protect it. That's all I'm trying to do. What an ingrate. Well, you have been pretty hard on her, mother. So I've been hard. Well, young man, I'll show you just how hard I can be. I'll give you exactly 24 hours to make your decision. What decision do you mean? Either you leave this woman or you don't get another cent out of me ever. Good night. Why did you pull such a scene with Mother? After all, she is my mother, you know. Yes, they do say a boy's best friend is his mother, don't they? Meaning? Oh, nothing. In a way, I'm sorry about it all. I suppose it puts you in the position of choosing between mother and wife. <laughs> Another ultimatum, eh? Oh, I was right. You have been told to choose, haven't you? Why, why, no. Down it all, Lola, Mother's right. You are exasperating. You don't seem to realize she supports us. John, you were old enough to marry. You should be man enough to work. Didn't it ever occur to you to try to be independent? Why should I? What Mother gives me is rightfully mine. It's my father's estate. You've everything you want, haven't you? No. 
Dinner is served. Very well, Mary. Mr. Weymouth will be right in. I'm not dining. Yes, Mrs. Weymouth. What's the idea? Aren't you hungry? Yes. For old friends. John, I gave up everything for you. I don't think you could say as much, or tonight's scene wouldn't have been possible. Oh, I want to go back to Broadway. I want to see the places I used to know. After all, it's only four blocks west of here. Are you going alone? Yes, unless you go with me. Why, of course. Of course. We should go out more than we do. Although I can't stay late, I have an important engagement. John, let's be ourselves for a change. Let's pretend you just met me outside the stage door and we still have illusions about everything. All right, dear. Tonight, we'll forget about everything. Not quite. Tommy needs a good night kiss. You start to dress. It's very good to see you again, Miss Lola. Thank you, George. You make an evening of pleasant memories complete. That's very kind of you. I never realized you had so many friends, Lola. Neither did I until I gave them all up. You don't know what tonight has meant to me. The theater and old acquaintances. It all seems so carefree after this afternoon. Does it uh, mean enough to go back to? For an evening, yes. But there happens to be a little man at home, at least I hope, who takes all my interest these days. How about me? You don't see any other bows around, do you? Hello, Checker. Hi, Tom. Oh, the phone is running. Not so good. But I'll make you a little better. See that name in black? Bet you that double scotch, she orders a whiskey straight. Whiskey straight, please. Say, Tom, is that Lola Allen? Yes. It's been years since I've seen you last. You're looking marvelous. Well, still the same old flatter, aren't you, Jackson? <laughs> I want you to know my husband, Mr. Weymouth, Mr. Fraley. Well, this is the guy you married. Well, there's no accounting for taste, is there? I you, Toots? Extremely bored. Try, you get over that. You get over that. Now that I'm here, we're going to have some fun, huh? Waiter! Waiter! Bring on the wine. We're going to drink a little toast to the lady. A little toast to your wife. We were just leaving, Tessa. Yes, sir. I'll get the pill. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't go. Don't go. <laughs> Don't go yet. Yeah. Now, now, maybe I'm a little bit much. Just a little bit. But I'm feeling kind of high because you're here. It's a long time since you decorated my landscape. Now, wait. Mr. Fraley is very kind. He used to be one of my most persistent admirers. I take it you're rather fond of my wife. Fond of her? Now listen, brother, I'd have given up the horses for her, and I'm the biggest bookmaker in town. What a sacrifice. Are you ready? It's getting late, and I have an early engagement with Mother in the morning. How about a little dance, honey? A little dance. I'm little dance. sorry, but I'm leaving, Tessie. You'll excuse us, I'm sure, Mr. Fraley. Now, just a minute, lightweight. Don't give me none of those Park Avenue airs. Maybe my name ain't in the social register, but I'll give you six to five. I own the house you live in. You've been drinking too much, Checkers. You're not yourself. Oh, yes, he is. And so are you. He's bringing me here to be insulted. John, you don't mean that. I can only judge you by your friend. And he's a common drunk. Why, you big boss. What is she's too good for you. Ah! Oh, 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 oh. Come on, better get him up. You better get a doctor. Oh, 
Please tell the court the scene that occurred in your son's home in the afternoon of his death. I visited John's home that terrible day. He liked me to talk with him and his son. But she always resented my presence in this home that I was supporting. I object, Your Honor. And I demand that that testimony be stricken from the records on the ground that it is irrelevant and immaterial. Objection sustained. You may strike it out. Proceed with the testimony, please. Well, that afternoon, Mrs. Weymouth was particularly disagreeable. She, among other things, insinuated that marriage and all it entails was a distinct burden. She ignored her baby and devoted her time to dancing and loud, blatant radio music. I asked her to stop, if only for the baby's sake. But she yelled defiance at me and went to her room to drink cocktails. That old Wren looks as though her drink was straight vinegar. <laughs> I'll bet every time she peeled a dollar off her roll to give to the wife, it was like unwinding adhesive tape. Isn't there any way to stop her maliciousness? I'm afraid not. She's only enlarging what they forced you to testify when you were on the stand. The witness will please continue. Your Honor. And now, Mrs. Weymouth. Will you please tell the court what happened next? When John arrived home, I related to him his wife's impossible behavior. As I was talking, she burst into the room and accused me of falsehood, and then declared she was leaving the house forever. That's a lie. I told Mrs. Weymouth she must either stop making trouble and leave, or I would. John and I were happy when she wasn't interfering. Order. Your Honor, I'm very glad the defendant has challenged my client's testimony. Mrs. Weymouth, the defendant states your son was happily married. Will you please tell the court what your son intended to do? Had he lived? Yes. He had an appointment with me to discuss plans for a legal separation. The witness is yours, sir. No cross-examination. That will be all, Mrs. Weymouth. Cross-examination won't help us now. It's up to the judge. Your Honor, a few words will suffice to sum up for the plaintiff. You've heard the intolerable condition of a marriage between a respectable, home-loving man and a temperamental, pleasure-loving woman. This woman came from the transient career of an actress to the permanency of her home and motherhood. She has proved that she is temperamentally and socially unfit for domestic life. She insulted and grieved my client as thanks for her generosity. She neglected her child in pursuit of pleasures and dissipation. She forced her husband to accompany her to iniquitous nightlife resorts, dives which brought him into contact with her friends, one of whom killed him. That death has been partly vindicated by the sentencing of the criminal to a penitentiary sentence. I say partly because I believe the defendant to be an accessory to the fact, and as such, unfit for the upbringing of a child. This is the grossest exaggeration. The loss of that boy's father should indicate he needs a mother more than ever. Your Honor, I ask the court to give complete custody of the child to my client, as a grandparent who will love, cherish, and safeguard the boy as the image of her own dead son. Has the counsel for the defendant any further testimony in rebuttal? Your Honor, I submit that every bit of evidence brought forth by the plaintiff in this case is purely circumstantial and hearsay, as opposed to the real facts brought forth for your consideration by this defendant. The defense rests. In consideration of the extraordinary circumstances of this case, the court finds 
the defendant totally unfit for the care or company of any minor child, and hereby grants the unconditional custody of the boy, Thomas Weymouth, to his grandparent, Mrs. Lucille Weymouth. Miss Henry? Uh, Mrs. Weymouth Jr. is here again. She says it's most important. Tell her I'm in conference. Mr. Rogers, I've got to talk to you. Please tell me where my little boy is. Surely you know. Yes, I do, but I'm not going to betray my client's trust by telling you. Am I never to see him again? Mrs. Weymouth, I'm very sorry to have to tell you this, but the boy's grandmother desires he forget you. fainted into the house, and the children helped us carry you in here. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. These children, are they all yours? <laughs> well, in a sense, they are. This is a day nursery. I'm the matron. A nursery? A place just for children? Yes. Now, you run along, children, take your afternoon naps. Come on, dear. Come along. Feeling better, my dear? Much better. Of course, myself. Wouldn't you like something to eat? You must be hungry. Hungry? Diana, run along. Come, you can tell me your story over a cup of tea. Sometimes they grew confident. So you're Lola Weymouth. I remember reading of your case in the paper. And I said to Martha, that's my assistant, how unfair I thought it was that a court should separate a mother and a child no matter what the circumstances. But I did nothing, Mrs. Warren. Do you believe me? I do, my dear. Tell me, have you seen your little boy since they took him away? Never. I've tried, I've pleaded, I've begged, I've even advertised, but to no avail. Would you like to stay with me for a while? Do you? Do you really mean that I could be here with these children? Now that you know who I am and... and after what the court and the papers said about me? 
I think no woman so obviously devoted to a child as you are should be deprived of him. The children here will help make you forget the past. Uh, what is your maiden name, Lola? Allen. All right, Miss Allen. You're hired as my assistant. The state may say that you're unfit for the care of one child, but I employ you to watch over two dozen. I just can't speak. I'm so grateful. Well, this is my lucky day. Tommy's birthday. His first. Well, that's fine. Martha, this is one place where we never forget birthdays. Martha, I want you to meet Lola Allen. She's going to work with us from now on. Uh, Lola, this is Miss Rankin. I'm awfully glad, Miss Allen. Sometimes our charges act like young Indians, but I'm quite sure you love them as we do. I know I shall. Would you like to see them? Oh, yes. Tommy's a dear little boy who's far away with no father and mother. And so, we celebrate his birthday in memory. My, what an idea. I know two little girls whose birthdays are next week. Can we have parties in memory of them? Pass the cake. And no more questions. I must say you're a peculiar boy, Tommy. You never show interest in anything I do for you. Yes, I do. I want to have a good time, but gee, our parties are never much fun. That's no way to talk, Thomas. If you don't like your grandmother's company, you may leave the table. Thank you, Granny. since you came to us. Do you feel any happier? Oh, you know I do, thanks to you and all the children here. But it all seems pretty hopeless. I've exhausted every method of trying to locate Tommy. Oh, don't think me ungrateful. I always feel down in the mouth just after we've celebrated his birthday. I never thought the world big enough to keep a mother and child apart. Did you send your present? No, I begged the lawyer for his address, but he refused to give it to me. When he asked me where I was living, I thought it best not to tell him. Perhaps it's just as well. Nobody knows your identity here, and it better remain so. Particularly now that I'm leaving and turning the nursery over to you. Do you think it's wise? Suppose the newspapers should find out who's running the nursery. It would make a terrible scandal. That's all in the past, dear. I'm going to my sister's in Maine for a rest. And I can't afford to let anything worry me. Neither must you. 
I won't, I promise you. But please hurry back. I'm going to miss you terribly. Darling, I'm an old lady, and I may never come back. But if I don't, just remember, you're the only person I'd care to leave in charge of these children. I'll write you every week. Oh, don't you dare. Not unless you need money. <laughs> don't you ever get tired being with the children? I mean, aren't you glad when the day's over and you can go to a theater or something? No, Martha, but I think I know what's on your mind. You've got a date. <laughs> you don't mind, do you? The fellow's no Barrymore. But I get so fed up on this baby talk sometime, I'd go to dinner with anybody not in their second childhood. I almost envy you. <laughs> See you later, Lola. Well, Pat, having a good time on the seesaw? Yeah, but just like everything else in life, full of ups and downs. Well, where in the world did you ever learn that expression? Oh, my daddy tells me everything. Last night he said Kid Nelson is a cinch to win the heavyweight championship, and Peggy Joyce is getting married again. That's no way for a young lady to talk. Well, daddy talks that way. What's good enough for him is good enough for me. And what does this fine daddy of yours do for a living? Oh, he's a radio announcer. Hello, Miss Allen. Well, how's Pat's behavior today? Well, suppose we let the answer for herself. I won't talk. <laughs> no. Right, come on, everybody upstairs. Daddy, do you think I'll be as pretty as Miss Allen when I grow up? Pat, you're a very embarrassing young lady. Oh, forgive her, please. I can't understand why she talks that way. Well, you told me the other night that you thought Miss Allen was swell looking. Good evening, Mr. Collins. Oh, Miss Allen, may I speak to you for a moment, please? Of course. Now, you wait here, then. Daddy will be back in a minute. Sure, take your time to get it off your chest. Miss Allen. This is the first chance I've had to talk to you alone, and I want you to know how indebted I feel. Indebted? I don't think I understand. You always pay me on time. Oh, it isn't that kind of a debt. I mean, the way you've taken Pat in hand. You see, she's very fond of you. And I of her. She's a lovely little girl. Oh, I'm crazy about her. I made a pal of her, perhaps a little bit too much. Since her mother died, I've been the only one she's had, outside of you. Well, I didn't know. Has she been gone long? Since Pat was a year old. Well, I've got to get her home. I go to work at 10. You're a radio announcer, aren't you? Yes, station WBM. You see, my grandfather was a train announcer, and I guess I was born with a desire to talk. <laughs> Ever listen in? Sometimes, to the music. <laughs> Good night. Oh, by the way, I just happened to think, uh, Pat would like it an awful lot if you'd take dinner with us some night. Oh, why not tonight? We'll go to some place on Broadway and see some of the gay side of life. How about it? Well, that's awfully nice. And I hate to disappoint Pat, but... I, I have an engagement. Mm -hmm. How about some other time, then? Well, I'm afraid I can't promise. I'm awfully busy. Thanks, anyway. Good night. Good night. Night, Pat. What's the matter? Doesn't she love you? Young lady, if you don't stop being so fresh, I'm going to take you away from here and get you a nurse. Oh, nurse of that? What did you say? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Hugh Collins giving you the news flashes of the evening. Here's one. A man in Newark asked the court for a divorce from his wife because she is so busy with her three children, she lost her job in a shoe factory. Too bad he doesn't know about a swell nursery a friend of mine runs. Write me for the address before your husband divorces you. Here's a flash just arrived. Jack Israeli, the Broadway gambler serving a sentence for the sensational killing of John Weymouth five years ago, escaped from the state penitentiary tonight. Fraley's escape brings to mind the disappearance of Lola Weymouth, once a stage beauty and favorite of the Broadway night spots. 
She has never been seen since the state involved her in her husband's death and took her child from her. I'd say she got what she deserved. left a note stating he had stolen and speculated away the estates of several of his wealthy clients. Why, Nora, Mr. Rogers was my attorney. Nora, call Dr. Jarvis. Hello, operator. Dr. Jarvis and Pellin. No, it's urgent. Hurry. Tommy, your grandmother is very sick. Oh, doctor, is there any improvement? No. I'm afraid I have very bad news for you. Mrs. Weymouth must spend the rest of her life in a sanitarium. What's that? A hospital, Tommy, and no place for a healthy young fellow like you. Tommy's going to have a new home. Do you mean his house is going to be closed? Yes. I'll explain briefly. At Mrs. Weymouth's request, I investigated the scandal of Rogers' suicide. Her fears were justified. Her money and her investments are almost completely gone. Jane, take Tommy to his room. Understand, Doctor. I don't mind losing my job, but what's to become of Tommy? Mrs. Weymouth is leaving everything in my care, and I believe I have Tommy's future in hand. I'm going to take him to a highly respected nursery near my office. Now, you mustn't be so shy. You and I are going to be great friends. Are there other children here to play with? Why, of course, Tommy. Would you like to see them while I talk with Miss Allen? Maybe. Surely. I'll have Martha show him the play art. Tommy, this is Martha. How do you do? Now, you run along and Martha will introduce you to your new little playmate. Go along, Zoe. Now, Doctor, you say you're acting for this boy's parents? Not his parents, his guardian. He's an orphan of a very prominent family. For that reason, his guardian wishes the boy's identity to remain unknown. I shall enroll him here under my name, Thomas Jarvis. This is all very unusual, Dr. Jarvis. However, your reputation makes me accept what you ask. Thank you, Miss Allen. Tommy will live here until further notice. The little fellow's had a deal of tragedy and loneliness in his life. He needs a good mother. I love children, Doctor. I love them as though they were my own. I'm quite sure of that. Good day, Miss Allen. Goodbye, Doctor. Hello. Evening bulletin. I want to insert my usual weekly notice in your personal column. You are both going right into Miss Allen. Now, don't get out of bed again. Lola, these two have been fighting. Fighting? I'm surprised that you've had. And you too, Tommy. Gentlemen do not fight, particularly with little ladies. Well, she, she started it. She said you liked her best. Did you say that, Pat? Sure. He thinks he's your favorite. But I know anyone with sense never likes little boys better than little girls. 
Do you both really like me as much as that? Mm -hmm. Then listen carefully. I love you both just the same amount. Can't I have most? That's the best she can do, be satisfied. But I still get the most, though, because I have two on my side. Why, what do you mean, Pat? My daddy. You love him, too, don't you? He says he loves you. Pat, don't talk like that. Now run along, and no more fighting. Okie dokie. Come on. Marty. Yeah. Yeah, this is me, Checkers. Who? Lola Weymouth. Well, where is she? Just my luck. I can't leave this dump with every cop in town looking for me. Listen. Listen. You follow her, see? Let me know where she nests. Yeah. I've been thinking about that name for a long time. Okay. So that's the story of a guy in love. Will you marry me? No, Hugh, I can't. I don't get you. If it's the nursery and the kid you'd miss, well, you'd have Pat for your own, and I'll stack her up against anyone. I know she needs a mother. Hugh, I think so much of you that I'm tempted to tell you the truth about... about someone you evidently hate. You talk in riddles. Who is it that I hate, and what have they to do with us? Hugh, will you still love me if I don't tell you? Why, yes, of course, but what's the answer? Take me home before I tell you more than I should. Don't do that. I've been a radio announcer long enough to know when I'm speaking out of turn. Oh, wait a minute. Let me have a check. Hello, honey. Well, ain't you got a good word for a pal? Really? Why do you come here? That's easy. First, to see you. Second, to fool the coppers. I guess you know I skipped the pen. I heard. That's why you mustn't come here ever. No one knows who I am. Nobody knows anything about my past. You must forget me. Oh, yeah? Well, listen. Once, I took a long rap just for talking to you. I've had a long time to think about you in many ways. Now you're going to do me some good. What do you mean? You said nobody knows your Lola Weymouth. What kind of a racket are you running here? This is a nursery. I take care of children. It isn't the kind of place you'd be interested in. Oh, that's just where you're wrong, sister. It's just the place for me. I'm Stan. Oh, but you can't. You don't understand. This is a child's home. It's my home. Oh, you... you wouldn't ruin it all, would you? If you make me, yeah. Now listen, either you let me hide out here, or I'll see that every paper in town carries the story about you. The dame that isn't allowed to have her own kid and runs a nursery. Now, how about it? All right. There. Well, it ain't exactly the Ritz. Got its advantages. Well, now that you're here, what do you intend doing? Sleep, eat, and 
look at you, baby. The only time you'll see me is when I bring you food. And if you've got anything else on your mind, forget it or get out now. <laughs> All right, have it your own way. Don't call me too early for breakfast. I'm going to have a nice rest cure here. You, me, in a kid's nursery. <laughs> what a hideout. Here's your lunch. Aren't you hungry? Not very. Just leave it there. I'll eat it later in my room. Pardon me for asking, Lola, but for the past week you've had all your meals alone in your room. Why? Martha, I wish I could tell you. But I can't. That's why I want to be alone. All right. I won't ask you again. Mrs. Weymouth's attorney, may I ask what caused her sudden death? I would say cerebral hemorrhage. The old girl was a difficult patient. I could have possibly prolonged her life, but she was so obstinate and disagreeable she wouldn't take orders. I know, Doctor. She displayed considerable high blood pressure in her short dealings with me. I'm sorry I couldn't have gotten here any sooner. Did she leave any instructions for me? None. I suppose she left a small estate. Yes, you were to be paid and the slight residue goes to the grandson. Splendid. You, of course, remember the abominable way she treated the boy's mother. I do. So I'm taking him out of that nursery and putting him in my own home. Good for you, Baron. Well, good night, Doctor. Good night. Good evening. Is my daughter time to come home with me? Apparently not, Mr. Collins. She's nowhere in sight. No, Mr. Collins. I can't marry you. I hardly know you. Who's your family? Well, my, uh, my grandmother's retired, Miss, uh, Miss Allen. My mother out of work. Are you in a position to support me? Well, all I got is a mouse cap and two gumdrops. I'll take a gumdrop and you can consider us engaged. Children, what are you doing here? Hello, Daddy. How's church? Young lady. What do you mean by playing in this office? I can tell you, sir. Uh, Pat and I were just playing where were you and Miss Allen. You see, uh, we all know you say funny things to her, because cause we listen. <laughs> Tommy, I'm surprised at you. Now, I want both of you children to apologize to Mr. Collins immediately. No, you two run out and play. Go on, scram. I guess it's up to me to make these apologies, not kids. Well, what do you mean? Well, my persistency. I've proposed so many times that I guess the youngsters have started to mimic me or something. <laughs> oh, if you put it that way, I suppose it's my fault. I shouldn't allow you to. Well, I won't again. But Lola, will you marry me? Hugh, you're a dear person, but I can't. Now look here. There's something funny about all this. You don't look well, and for the past week you've been avoiding me. Why? You in trouble? Can I help? Is it money, men, or just plain indigestion? Don't joke, Hugh. You can't help me, so please go away and, and don't think about me. Well, I guess I am a chump for not having accepted the ice before. I'll be leaving. If it's not too much trouble, would you help me find Pat? She's probably in the nursery with Tommy. Miss Allen doesn't want you to go up there. You kind of spook some things. Crazy cat! <laughs> Who are you calling scared? I'm not scared of anything except castor oil. Get out of the way. See what's in that trunk. Shh, you must be quiet. I want to explore before Miss Allen finds us. All right. <clears throat> Mr. 
Miss Allen, this gentleman would like to see you. Oh, if you'll pardon me, I'll go find Pat. My name is Barrett, Miss Allen. I've come to take Thomas Jarvis out of the nursery. Why, well, I don't understand. Tommy's very happy here. I know, but uh, plans for the boy have been changed since the death of his guardian. I'm the attorney for the estate, and I want to take the boy to my own home. I saw a picture of the King of Sweden, and he had a hat just like that. Lots of soldiers wear them. I can't locate Pat at all. She's probably upstairs playing with Tommy. Tommy! Pat! this. <laughs> Lord, is it silly? Pat. Tommy. Let's hide until I get here, and then we'll jump out and scare them. They'll think we're ghosts. Let's hide back here. How did you two kids get up here? Well, we were just playing. We didn't mean any harm. I don't like you. Did she send you up to watch me? Did she? Marge and Spencer are the only ones in the nursery. Then you'd better stay with the moth. I don't want them to disappear, too. Uh, what's up there? Why, why, just the attic and a lot of old clothes. Why, why, I'm sure they wouldn't go to such a musty place. Oh, yeah? Well, it's probably just where they would go. Oh, Pat! Tommy! You! You! You wouldn't go up there! Why not? We searched every other room but that one. Miss Allen, I insist that we continue this. Please, please, it's dangerous. I don't want you to go. Are you hiding someone up there? Get down off them stairs or I'll blow your ears off. Daddy! Daddy! There's a man up here with a gun! And he's gonna shoot! It's me, Pat. Open that door or I'll break it in. I'll give you one more chance down there. Take your hands off that door or I'll shoot. Please, Daddy, we're all right. Go away. Who's up there with those kids? An, an escaped convict. I, I've been hiding him. A convict? I'm going to notify the police. There's no exit from the garret except by the hall and stairs that you can watch from that door. Now listen carefully. The man upstairs is Checkers Fraley. Is that your father down there? Yes, and he's stronger than you are. He'll punch you in the nose. I guess your daddy's there too, isn't he? I have no father. But I'm not afraid of you. All right, all right. Now, 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 I'm very glad you kids are here. Keep quiet and do everything I tell you. Everything will be all right. But if you don't, you're going to get hurt. And now you know how Fraley got here and why he came. Lola Weymouth. John Weymouth's wife? Yes. Did you insert this ad? What? Can, can you give me any information about it? Yes. Tommy Jarvis is really your son. Tommy. You stay here and listen. I'll take care of Fraley. Oh, Fraley. Yeah? I'll make a bargain with you. You let those kids come down and we'll forget to watch the door when you leave. You? Promise anything. Well, what do you say? How do I know that dame won't cross me again? She brought you here, didn't she? I'm handling this. Now take it or leave it. No cops around? No. All right, now send those kids down. Okay. If you want to keep healthy, you scram with them. No 
All cops, eh? Well, here's my answer. Come here. Are you hurt? No. That siren spoiled everything. What's going on here? Tekis Bradley is up there with a gun. Say, we've been looking for that guy for weeks. Come on, let's blast him out. You can't. There are two children up there. Well, this is a mess. How did Fraley get in here in the first place? No, you're wasting time. Get Fraley. We want the children. Fraley, this is the police. Come on down here. We'll come up and get you. Don't get tough, Flatfoot. I'll have the kids tell you where they are. Go on, tell them where you are. We're right at the trap door. He's, he's making us stand here. All right, now everybody down there, listen. You give me a half hour start with these kids for protection and I'll leave them where they can get home. Think it over, boys. Come on, come on, buddy. Get out of here. Get out of here. Are you afraid now, Pat? I guess so. Why? Let's climb out there and maybe we can get to your dad. It's, it's awful dark, but I'll try. Hey, you kids, come back here. You'll break your necks. Look, you kids, let me help you back, see? You know, I'll send you down to your folks. Oh, wait! Look out, you'll make it spoil if you don't look out. Please, look, look, you kids. Come back. You're gonna come back if I have to drag you back. Now, wait a minute. Come on, you kids, get back in there. Don't do anything like that again. You're going to be with me always. <clears throat> Just tell her I'm starting court action tomorrow. It'll give Tommy to her. And good luck. Thank you. Oh, Lieutenant, it's really... No, close to it. They just took him away. Collins, due to all the excitement, I haven't found out yet how Fraley got in here, of all places. What do you know about it? Well, you see, I came to pick up my daughter. She was playing with little Tommy. They disappeared. In searching for them, I saw a man sneak up into the garret. Evidently where the tots were playing. Well, I guess he was looking for a place to hide. That's all. Oh, I see. I didn't get this lady's name. Allen's her name. Miss Allen. But by the time the newspapers get it, I hope it'll be Mrs. Collins. <laughs> Congratulations. I'll be seeing you. Better hurry, Pop. We women often change our minds. That's a good idea, Pat. Good work, sister. Thanks, brother. <laughs> <laughs> 